U.S.-China chip war, America is winning. For more than a century, the scramble for oil unleashed wars, forced unusual alliances, and sparked diplomatic rows. Now the world's two biggest economies are battling over another precious resource, semiconductors, the chips that literally power our daily life. These tiny fragments of silicon are at the heart of a $500 billion industry that is expected to double by 2030. And whoever controls the supply chains a tangled network of companies and countries that make the chips holds the key to being an unrivaled superpower. China wants the technology to produce chips. That's why the U.S., a source of much of the tech, is cutting Beijing off. The two countries are clearly engaged in an arms race in the Asia-Pacific, says Chris Miller, author of Chip Wars and associate professor at Tufts University. But, he adds, there's more to the race, it takes place both in traditional spheres, like numbers of ships or missiles produced, but increasingly, it's taking place in terms of the quality of artificial intelligence, AI, algorithms that can be employed in military systems. For now, the U.S. is winning, but the chip war it has declared on China is reshaping the global economy. The Chipmakers The manufacture of semiconductors is complex, specialist, and deeply integrated. An iPhone has chips that are designed in the U.S., manufactured in Taiwan, Japan, or South Korea, then assembled in China. India, which is investing more in the industry, could play a bigger role in the future. Semiconductors were invented in the U.S., but over time East Asia emerged as a manufacturing hub, largely because of government incentives, including subsidies. This allowed Washington to develop business ties and strategic alliances in a region vulnerable to Russian influence during the Cold War. It's just as useful now, in the face of Beijing's growing influence in the Asia-Pacific. The race is on to make the best and most efficient chips at scale, and the smaller, the better. The challenge, how many transistors, tiny electrical switches that can turn a current on or off, can you fit onto the smallest bit of a silicon wafer? It's what the semiconductor industry calls Moore's Law, essentially doubling the transistor density over time, and that's a hard goal to achieve, said Ju Wang, a partner at Silicon Valley at Bain & Company. It's what enables our phones to get faster, our digital photo archive to get bigger, our smart home devices to get smarter over time and our social media content to get richer.